Hey, Mr. Garage, and uh, behind me, I have all the components for a super basic lift, a very affordable, easy, but very functional lift for the Lexus GX470. Um, the main components are Bilstein 5100s, and we're going to be doing an airbag trick, which I don't think anybody's really covered online. I kind of touched on it on a previous video how I did it, but we'll be going through that. So we're going to be taking my wife's completely bone stock Lexus service since day one, um, very, very nice GX470, and we're going to basically turn it into what mine is, which is awesome for forest roads, washes here in Arizona, minor off-road adventures, camping, that kind of thing. And the reason I go with this lift, which gives you about two inches of lift, it's very easy on the drivetrain, very easy on the front axles. We tow a lot, and we do a lot of freeway uh, driving to our sites. So I don't want to be chewing up CVs or anything like that. Um, I don't want to, I want, don't want to ruin drive shafts or anything. So this lift for, if you're doing the kind of things that I do, which is tow trailers, quads, you know, boat, whatever, uh, this is an awesome lift. It makes the car look great and it keeps that factory reliability. Uh, so yeah, let's get into what the components are. Again, it's, it's a very, you don't have a long shopping list for this lift. It's really, really basic and really easy to do. So let's take a look. All right, so for the lift itself, um, we have our Bilstein shocks, our 5100s. This is going to be the part number. I believe these are the rears. And then we have this part number, this 196-499. Um, this is going to be for the fronts, okay? I have just a standard diff drop kit. I do use these. These are real controversial. Um, a lot of the off-road guys say they don't matter and, and for them they may not matter but if you're doing a trip where you're driving 80 miles an hour every degree counts on your front boots and uh, on your CV boots and um, yeah I mean it's just important to keep those things flat so you get the most life out of them that you can. So I, I've done diff drops on all four of my 4x4s and uh, just to get them back in line and I've never ripped the boot to date, but I'm also not wheeling like a lot of you guys are. So, um, again, this is more um, getting our equipment to where we want to play off-road, that kind of a lift, and also looking damn good while doing it. Now, the tires, I'm doing something a little different this time. These are Kinda Mud Terrains. I've had these on my travel trailer. I'm not sure you guys may have seen a video about that uh, in the past, but these are Kinda Cleaver Mud Terrains in a load range E. Um, since I tow heavy with the GXs, I do like a load range E, not the most comfortable thing if you're just daily driving, but I do like them. But the Kenda is what I haven't tried on a vehicle. They've worked well in the travel trailer, but um, kind of my semi off-road forest road travel trailer, but I haven't uh, haven't used them on a vehicle. So we're gonna give these a shot. We're gonna see how they do. I can tell you they balance like crap. They're, I'm a mud train, but they did balance like crap. Um, I can say the Toyos that I usually run that are extremely expensive, balance um far far and away better now the thing why i didn't go toyo this time this was only about oh i think i paid 550 bucks for a set of five and compared to 1400 dollars for a set of the toyo mud trains in the same size so um, I can actually buy two of these sets installed for what I would pay for a single set of the Toyos. Now, does that mean this is a better deal? I really don't know yet. That's what we're going to find out. But yeah, so all the components we're going to be putting in today. Again, we're going to be putting in 5100s. We're going to do, be doing an airbag trick in the rear. So we're going to space up our airbag sensor so that we get lift in the rear. We're going to be putting in a diff drop. We're going to be slapping on rims and tires. And we're going to pull the running boards off the GX. And then poof, we take it from a mall crawler to something that actually is very off-road capable. I'm not going to call it a wheeler or anything, but very off-road capable and very good on the trails. All right, there's our patient right there. There is my wife's bone stock GX470. As I mentioned, she was factory serviced from Lexus. Uh, by the previous owner, she had like $15,000 in receipts on this Lexus. I couldn't even believe how much Lexus raked her over the coals on so many fine details on this vehicle. But but uh, I ended up getting a gym, so um, everything has been replaced down to the airbags. So I do keep the factory airbags on my GXs and uh, because... Frankly, towing as much as I do, being able to drop the vehicle, hook up a trailer, and just hit a button and lift back up. Yeah, I can do that with aftermarket setup if I want to convert it to rear coils and all that, but really, it does everything I need, and it's comfortable. I don't know why people say the rear airbag trick in doing it that way is not comfortable. 
it's completely comfortable and it rides really good. So I'm happy with it. So I guess some other people think that they can do better and maybe they can, but uh, for what I'm doing, this is cheap, economical, it works fantastic and it tows very well. So anyways, um, yeah, there's the vehicle and you can see the uh, running boards there. That is the first thing that's gonna go. We're yanking those suckers off. Then we're gonna go to the front. We're gonna throw in our diff drop, which is so easy to install. I'll show you guys how to do that if you've never done one. It's easy and safe to put in. And um, we're gonna pull it out. My garage is completely full right now of toys and things I'm working on and other projects. So we're gonna pull it out to the street and we're just going to do the lift. It's, it is a street worthy lift. That's how easy it is to do. So we'll get on that and uh, yeah, I can't wait. Let, let's get this done. All right, so that was quick. That was five minutes worth of work. Pulled one running board off. All it is is a wire harness you unplug. Uh, I think it's six 12 millimeter bolts and a 10 millimeter bolt, and you can kind of pull the pull the running board off itself. My son's doing the other side, but that was our five minute progress update. We've already got uh, running boards off and a whole lot more ground clearance than what we had before. Um, pretty excited about that. And as soon as he gets done on his side and we're happy with that, we're gonna move on and install the diff drop, which is another really quick and easy thing to do. So be back in a minute. All right, so um, I've got a 19 millimeter box and I put up on top here. You've got two nuts, capture nuts on top of your differential mounting bracket. Now the goal of this setup is for a diff drop is we have this big old bolt here. We're gonna be putting this aluminum spacer between this cross member here and the diff bracket. So we're gonna drop this bracket down about an inch and that will lower the whole differential down and our CV axles will lower as well um, with it. Now to get this off, uh, to get a 19 millimeter box in and we're gonna use our, we're gonna have to use an air impact because these are on there pretty good. So we're gonna put this on and here we go. God, I love that air cap. Mm. Okay, so on this one, the very first one, we're going to take it all the way loose, but we're going to put it back in, say, that much. So we want it there, okay? Now, there's a reason for that. I'll show you in just a second. What am I grabbing? Hands have a mind of their own sometimes. Okay. we got to get boxing on. Now we're going to do this side. This side I'll go ahead and take out. All right, so we got our spacer in this side and now we've got to pry this side down to get our other spacer in. Um, but always make sure you have at least one bolt holding the diff, which I went ahead and put the the, spa the new uh, long bolt and new um, nut assembly up top. I put those in a few threads just to be safe. And we're gonna space this one out. down just like that there we go now let me just see if it's centered enough to get the bolt in okay the bolt will go up now go ahead and take a plate up inside we take our new nylock nut get this on the top and that's it for the diff drop we're actually going to just tighten everything back up and we've got some of these little spacers and small bolts that are going to go under the the front skid plate to kind of space the skid plate down just a tiny tiny bit and other than that i mean that's it that we're, we're done with this portion so uh, I would say diff drop complete. If you guys have any questions, drop it in the comments. But that's all we're trying to do is put these spacers between this cross member and take our differential and push our differential down and done. So We've got the running boards off, gave it a ton more clearance on the sides and uh, kind of peekaboo at uh, my GX there with the tandem 612s on it. This one's gonna get the tandem 612 as well, but in silver. That's the color the wife wanted. That's what she gets. So, um, 
Yeah, so right now we've got everything set up. We're gonna lift the back end. We're gonna pull off these 600,000 mile tire Michelins. Um, God, these things never ever wear out. They're like freaking skateboard tires. They're just there until the car falls apart. But anyways, we're pulling those off and uh, we will get these nice aggressive, nice offset wheels and tires on. We're gonna do our um, airbag spacer trick. So we get lift on the back end and uh, get our 5100s on the back and then we will move to the front. So here we go. All right, so what we have up in here is this is our airbag bracket and this is our sensor adjustment. I never like moving these because they are very fine, uh, very hard to adjust, very fine increments on this. I would rather use something solid, which is simple to do to space the plate out evenly. Um, and you can see the sensors right here. I've already taken it off. It's two 12 millimeter bolts that simply go up through and into the frame like that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be stacking, we're gonna do six washers. Now each of, the, each of these washers is about a 16th thick. And these are, just for reference, M8 flash, flat washers in stainless. All right, so we're gonna do six of these and they're gonna go on top just like that so we got four five and six and um i think that's about the mount that i had my other gx and we're just going to get the bolt started the factory bolts at least on the 07 and 08 i've been able to confirm are definitely long enough we don't have any problem with the length all right now it's a little harder to get the second one because you gotta kind of hold it and then we're gonna do one, two, three, four. Let's see if I can get two on. Five and six. All right. Now that will space the sensor an exact amount, which is what we want. And that should give us the exact amount of height to complement the adjustments in the 5100 struts in the front, which we'll get to in a little bit. So, and if we need to, if we need to raise or lower, we can always add a washer or we can remove a washer. But like I said, about every washer is about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch. As I'm doing that, I'm looking at my rear brake pads and going, crap, I need to change my rear brake pads here soon. Again, this is a newer vehicle to our family, so I haven't really dug into it too much. But uh, we're getting the essentials done first, right? So making it look good and making it able to go off-road. Now I just have to make it reliably go off-road. Okay, we're done. That is the airbag trick that everybody talks about that no one's documented. Just a stack of washers. We put them between the uh, airbag or the, uh, yeah, the airbag sensor bracket and the frame done that's it that's all we do now we're just going to change out this uh strut that was an awesome sound effect um take off the bottom take off the top we'll use the jack underneath to kind of manipulate this up and down the axle so we can get this strut off we're going to take off our electronic adjustment on there and we'll go grab our 5100 and get that installed so all right so that's it for what we're doing today on this side for the rears so we have our rear new bushings in the shock um, I've got a little over, um, I would say an eighth to a little over an eighth of thread showing on the top of this nut. That's about where I put it. That's uh, the bushings are just starting to kind of collapse a little bit. I use a lot of grease um, on the top and bottom of each of the bushings uh, when I put these in. And we are bolted in down here. Um, again, we have our airbag sensor trick. I got six washers in it. And that should be it for the rear lift. Now, obviously, we have to mirror the other side, but that's all we have to do to lift the rear. Um, I'm gonna get the other side knocked out real quick and then we will move on to the front All right, so the rears done. I'm gonna go ahead and Hit the airbags up to the normal level And then we're gonna see where This car sits After she's fully aired up in comparison to where the fronts are because remember I've still got to put 5100s on the front and that's gonna show us kind of uh, how much lift we're gonna get there. Now you can kind of see the rake, the front sitting way lower, which will be fixed um, once we get the front 5100s on. So that's about the lift we're doing. 
All right. For this lift, 5100's already come set up exactly where I want them. So you can see where the snap ring is here. So here's the top of the shock. And we are on the second groove down. Now, according to instructions, this nets us um, on average 1.75 inches of lift. That's about where we want it. So that's perfect. So I took off this little cover boot. We're going to take our uh, spring bracket, spring perch piece, and uh, slide this down. And that's going to go over that little... Uh, um, snap ring like that. Now the snap ring, it's very important you make sure this thing is seated. Don't trust the factory. So grab onto the shock body tight and spin that snap ring in that groove to make sure it's 100% seated into that groove. You don't want to have a failure on this, but when they're done right, they're not going to break. So that comes down just like that and that gives us our lift. So the lift is actually created um, from spring tension. It's kind of like a coilover shock where you're tightening one of the collars and you're tightening the spring, basically kind of crushing down the spring and that puts more force down, which creates your lift. So this is the type of lift. It's actually um, a spring compression type lift rather than a spacer lift. I like this because in my opinion, the factory springs on the GX are just way too soft. They're squishy soft. And when you're towing or using a uh, weight distribution hitch, you're actually putting more weight on the nose, my fingertips being the nose of the car, if you can't tell, uh, you're putting more weight on the nose of the car. And I like a stiffer suspension or a stiffer spring in the front. Now I can buy an aftermarket. You can do all those things. You get better springs and all that. But this lift is the poor man's lift. Like I said, you can do this for the shocks for about 370 bucks for the shocks. And you don't even have to buy wheels and tires if you don't want that you can do this lift for that cheap. So it's like 370 bucks. So it's a super cheap lift and it gives me everything I want and like for towing. And uh, that's why I'm doing it. And, uh, but this gives me everything I need and it makes the springs feel the way I want in the front when combined with these 5100s. So that's it. I'm going to quit uh, yapping. I got to go pull off the, the fronts and uh, we'll get these installed. All right, so this is my McPherson strut compressor tool. Um, I can pretty much just set a foot on it and do it one-handed. And this is going to completely, well, maybe two feet and a hand. I feel like a chimp doing this. Anyways, yeah, this tool is awesome because it doesn't take hardly any force. And it compresses the spring safely as opposed to like the crappy ass spring hanger things from Harbor Freight that will explode on you. So don't ever use those. Use one of these. Anyways, let me get this done. All I'm going to do is just compress this down, pull the top hat off. I'm going to slide in our new uh, Bilstein back up into the spring and into the top hat and then torque it down. And that's it. That'll be the strut replacement. Oh man, we are done. The fronts beat us up. They still have the factory adjustable shocks on them. And those are a real pain in the ass to get out. Uh, excuse my language there, but man, they beat us up. I uh, can't stand those. But uh, yeah, there she is. Sitting in the exact stance that I want. I did take it for a little spin and try to get this front suspension to settle a little bit. But uh, I still got some more to do and I'm going to get it aligned tomorrow. But it turned out great. Now that's hers. And that one... But the bronze rims is mine, and mine had an AC compressor just seized recently, so that's a new video coming up. I gotta do uh, AC compressor, condenser, and a whole bunch of crap on that. Hopefully, I can get that going. But yeah, um, we're all set. That is your $400 lift. All the parts you really needed to do that lift are just the Bilstein 5100s and the part numbers I gave you, and then I recommend the diff drop. And that's really all the parts you need, but of course, a sweet set of rims and tires with a killer offset on them well that just that polishes the look off so yeah super super happy with that wife's gonna be happy with that and uh i can get out of this hundred and whatever it is eight degree weather we have today so i appreciate you guys watching i hope that helps some of you guys um uh, yeah simple as that i will catch you later